Now, a number of schools have recently been rocked by racism allegations. King Edward High School in Matadiele in the Eastern Cape and Leirskuel Schweitzer Renneka in the Northwest have been accused of racially segregating pupils. Parents at Wurskuel Stilfontein, also in the Northwest, have accused the school of allegedly failing black pupils. This morning, we're looking at the psychological effects of racism on children to help us unpack the issue. I'm joined in studio by educational psychologist Ms. Nonsik Elelo Rajwili. A very good morning to you, ma'am, and thank you so much for joining us. Morning, it you. may seem a very obvious concept, but when we talk about racism, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, other races thinking that they are more superior than others and therefore leading them to be to have uh, prejudice against those races that they think are inferior. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's that. And what happens when a child is exposed to that prejudice uh, at a very young age because of your race? What does it do to a child? Firstly, it affects the child's uh, self-esteem. So you'll have a child who's struggling to study in the classroom or to understand what the teachers are saying because of the inferiority complex. So that's one. Secondly, it also the research has uh, proved that, that racism affects children and they develop anxiety and depression. Mm. So when a child is anxious or depressed, that makes it difficult for them to study. And apart from that, we are now looking only at what is happening in the classroom. But prior to the child coming to the classroom, racism has affected that particular child in a way. Because firstly, the health system, the things that, uh, this, the food that the child eats. Because the parents are coming from a background that was regarded as inferior or that is still regarded mm. as inferior by others, then that child doesn't eat healthy food like all the other children in a classroom, especially maybe if they are in a previously Model C schools. So it has an effect on them, even nutritionally. Mm. Mm. And uh, the excuses or the what has been offered um, by schools that have segregated children or the pictures that we have seen is because children are separated because of their language. Uh, when you look at that, how do you assess that situation? You know, it was only the teachers or the principal's way of justifying what they, they, they've done and maybe they're embarrassed about it. But the reality is if you want to understand the people and if you want to understand the children, uh, you, you need to <laughs> if you want to understand the children, you need to, to live amongst them. You need to talk to them. You need to know what is it that they are happening. So if you are segregating these children, the, the white children, for example, will not understand what Tabiso or Mpo is going through, how they talk. So the only information about black children that the white children will have is the information that their parents give them. And sometimes I feel so sad to look at... Uh, the white people, the only people that are closer to them most of the time is their gardener and their domestic worker. So when they come into some situation, they, would, they always think that we are all like Mary in, the, in their kitchen or we are like John in the garden. So they will treat people like that. And our children do not have examples of leaders that are black in the schools to, so that they can understand that um, black people can be in leadership. What I was looking at is in most um, Model C schools, you'll find that principals, the head of staff, the teachers, they are all white. But the black people are the ones that are cleaning and doing the garden. And that is teaching unconsciously the children that black people, their only job or their only things that they can do is this. And therefore, that increases the inferiority complex because if I see, as a child, if I see a black parent cleaning, even if it's not my mother, for me it is like, okay, it means black mothers, mm. this is what they can do. Mm. So then it affects them more and it doesn't motivate them because they know that regardless of how hard we will work, we will end up cleaning the school premises or doing the garden for the school. So the self-esteem is affected. Mm. We're introduced to prejudice and bias uh, mm -hmm. so, so very uh, early on in life. Let's talk about in the classroom situation. You oftentimes mm -hmm. hear, but why are we separating the kids? Kids don't see color or kids are not racist or kids don't know what is happening. Is that a true uh, statement? No, it is not a true statement. You know, 
how the brain works, they u the brain usually see, especially the part of the brain that is called the amygdala, it sees what it usually see or what it is familiar with. So sometimes it's the unconscious way of the teacher to say, I'm only used to seeing this. I'm only used to seeing black children together and white children together. So I will do what I'm familiar with. And it will be easier for me to teach uh, Kaylee and Carl in this group because of the language they'll understand it easier whatever I'm teaching but with those I will teach I will give them inferior information you know so it is and I, I, I think it is important that these teachers have to be conscious of their, what they are doing mm -hmm. of the consequences because those kids that are put there it's not only about language Racism is also about believing that their ability is below the white children's ability. So, yeah. <laughs> There's an argument that says, but uh, maybe black parents need to uh, be careful where they send uh, their schools or protect your child from racism. Is that even possible? It is hard because as black parents, we are also exposed to racism at work. So it is the whole system that affects uh, the child. The system at work, the system at home, in the churches, there's also racism. A parent is working, and it's so hard to, to be calling and saying, is my child protected there? Mm -hmm. Is this happening? And the schools that have cameras where parents can access you know, um, footage through their phones, they are more expensive. How do a black parent check if their children are not exposed to racism? And uh, you know, there was a time when I was doing training in one of the schools, and one of the principals in that particular school, it was a primary school, she said in that training, you know what, um, these children have been forced down, through, th th uh, down our throats. And when she said these children have been forced down our throats, she was f talking about black children. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're thinking about something forced down your throat, what is it that you'll do? You'll want to vomit that. So parents were not there. I was the only professional there. At that stage, they were even ignoring. And this is what the teachers do. When a black, black child is coming to say, Madam so and so, this is what is happening, they ignore them. And if a child feels ignored, then the self-esteem also is affected. Mm. What about black parents who insist uh, perhaps that their children go to uh, white schools or if there are no white children in the school, the school is not good enough? Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, apartheid in the past has affected every black person emotionally and physically and psychologically as well. So there are those parents who still think that whatever is coming with a black person or from a black person is inferior and all that is good is what is brought by the white people and I, I also find it in conversations where you'll find that um, black people are denying to say no I'm Kosa or I'm Sutu mm. they will say no I'm South African and yet they know exactly that they are Kosa or they are Sutu when you're talking about the eth ethnic groups and this affects them a lot. So apartheid has affected the parents and therefore it's escalating up into their, their children. Mm. I think it was Einstein who said it is, e it is easier to break an atom uh, than prejudice. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, ma'am, for coming okay. through and chatting to us this morning. That was educational psychologist Nonsi Kelelo Rajwili.